All right, guys. So it is currently what time is it? Alexa, what time is it? The time is 11:18 p.m. You've heard it. So I have started reading *You're a Badass*, and guys, the first chapter itself is magical. I mean it. I mean I get it. Um, so the first chapter they're talking about the perspective people have about money, and I have that perspective that money isn't necessarily a good thing and I wouldn't say that I think rich people are bad but I know of many rich people who have used their resources badly and have ended up causing harm to other people so being rich is not something that I have an ambition for but when I read the first chapter I got like a more clearer idea as to why making money is not necessarily a terrible thing and why I should try and embrace it more but anyways so basically I love this book I've been wanting to read it and I just picked it up as I'm trying to transfer my documents from one hard drive to the other and it was gonna take a few hours so I'm like okay I'm just gonna grab the book and start reading and I've read the first chapter finished that and it feels good I am anxious to go on reading because it has set a good tone for me anyway but at the end of the chapter one um, they have a few questions and I must tell you it took me forever to answer these questions I thought of like okay it's cool I can answer this it's not hard to think about but when it came to writing them down it took me forever um, so one of the question was make a list of all the reasons why you deserve money can you make a list man you have to make a list of 10 reasons so the list I have here I even had it ended up getting a new notebook for this whole book reading thing um so the list i have is it gives me freedom i can make mistakes enables me to help others allow me to be me um it is due to my labor like the fruits of my labor i had that in quotation um secure the future of my family and then let's go to the next one and the last one i had it was money isn't evil <laughs> i don't think that's like a reason reason but it worked Okay, so then number two was make a list of some beautiful things that have happened in this world thanks to money. And I had cars, phones, projects such as building wells, building houses, building whatever. And then I also had movies, music, electronics, camera, TV, Alexa, Let's see. Um, and I also had books. Okay, so I also had books, jobs fashion styles and happiness I think happiness is my most powerful one then the third one was make a list of all awesome things and experiences money will add to your life now this one is a bit easier for me I had helping kids buying or building a house electronics I want to get like I'll be able to get a new camera and a new computer because it's something I want but I don't have money for that and TV and all those other type of electronics and then I had clothes and shoes, necessities, um, supporting others, friends and strangers, traveling, discovering new hobbies, start a scholarship fund, spread love, buy a good car. <laughs> I mean, some of these things sound selfish, but guys, when you have 10 lists to have, 10 list, 10 things on your list, 10 things you have to list, you have to not like have some selfish things in there. Maybe they're not sufficient anyways, but the fourth question was make a list of how you being rich will help others. I had invest in their business, offer financial assistance, donating money, help others discover their dreams, offering and tithe to support the church and the work of the church and spreading God's work, um, support missionaries, help students, I had scholarship fund, build a school or orphanage, assist the elderly by having an elderly home, and giving back to the community then the next one was like a statement it says i'm grateful for money because my answer was it allows me to be me and it allows me to make a difference so that's chapter one and i'm about to start chapter two you can see a thing i'm about to start chapter two so you shall see my review of chapter two in a few days i guess okay bye bye Okay guys, so I'm back again and we're going to talk about chapter 2 of the book, You're a Badass. 
as I said, it takes me basically like almost a day to read a chapter. And I started to summarize it on my notebook, so that way I wouldn't miss out anything I wanted to share, you know, just in case. Anyway, so for chapter two, it was talking about. I can't even remember the title. Let's see. It was about why you ain't rolling in the cheddar yet. I knew I knew cheddar was an actual word until I saw it here, cause cheddar for me it was shen. But apparently it's not, it's an actual word. But some of the things that they talk about, some of the quotes I have here is that our realities are make-believe. Whatever we make ourselves believe, we experience. And if you really think about it, most of our realities are based on our perception of life. So I, I guess I'd agree with it. If you're bad-mouthing money, you're gonna want to go ahead and knock that off. Right, so there are these perceptions we have. As I said before, my perception of money is not really good. I mean, I know money exists and I appreciate money to some extent, but I am not in love with money and I don't, I've not, it for me, it feels like money is not necessarily something that I should pursue. And I've never associated money with happiness. But then this book is helping me to think of it differently. So I'm like, money is okay, but I just waste it. I don't use it resourcefully, and that has been my mindset. So when I ha when I saw that bad mouthing money, that we should not bad mouth money, like money is evil or money is terrible. If you think about it, we need money for survival, and good people. There's some good people who also have money. Just because you have money doesn't mean you're evil. So that's like, boom, mind blowing for me. So the question part now. List five main things you remember your parents telling you about money. Um, what I had down was spend it wisely, save as much as you can. It belongs to God. Give tithe and invest mostly for retirement, but just invest for your future as well. And then number two was take any negative thoughts that you came up with that came up for you for you in the first step above and break them down. And I say that I had no negative thoughts. Then I thought about it again and then I wrote belongs to God. So it's not like it's a negative thought, but for me in my head it's like I worked hard for this money. So hypothetically it belongs to me. And then I rewrote that thought. Actually I wrote it already. Anyway, I wrote that thought and I said that although it belongs to me me saying money belonging to god means that the money i have i'm gonna use it for the good of others to help others and if you think about it we all belong to god so in natural instance that money is going to be god's so that's how i rewrote it in my mind what did i write here money should be used to help others we are all god's children so that's me rewriting it and changing my mindset on that so it's no longer like a negative thing it's more like I've worked hard for this money, yes, but I am going to use it for the good of other people and that's me transforming it into a positive thing. And the number five was, I didn't write it down because it was too long. Number five was, okay, it's very long but I'll just read the ending part that says, find something that's not serving you that you have been scared to let go of because of the security it provides and take the first step in letting it go. So I am still doing research on that. Um, once I find that out, I'm gonna get the next step. And then the last thing was that I'm grateful to money because it helps me and it helps others. So that concludes chapter two. Um, I will be finishing reading chapter two A before I go to sleep tonight. And then next time when I come back to you, you shall get a review of chapter two A and chapter three. So yeah, see you on the next review. Okay guys, so I am back with another review of this book, this awesome book. Um, so I read chapter 2a and chapter 3 and chapter 2a was iffy. It's probably my least favorite so far just because of the talk about intelli universal intelligence. 
but in her defense she did state that the universal intelligence can be whatever you believe in including god um however i don't have a lot of it highlighted mainly because i i, I felt iffy about some of the statements that were being made on this so i didn't highlight much but i did agree with some of the things that were being said so i won't talk too much about it it's called show um, me the man you get another mantra so she starts off with um a story of her mother how she was always using the word twat and then one day she came to realize what the meaning of that word is and she was actually very surprised because she's been using it so many times but she didn't know the meaning of it and there's a phrase um something that i have highlighted is when you don't investigate what's going on with your words thoughts and beliefs you risk stumbling through life on autopilot and probably that's something that has really resonated with resonated with me like the theory that i think money is evil why do i think money is evil what's my reason behind it sometimes i feel like just believe certain things just because um either other people believe it or that's what society has taught me to believe but i don't have a good reason behind that or to back it up so that's why this book is coming handy and then probably my most favorite one was money is only a tool it will take you wherever you wish but will not replace you as a driver so the as i said before i've always thought that money is evil and money has caused so much harm but when you think about it it's not really the money that's evil if it's the people that have the money and she says in the book that money on itself is neither good or evil it's like that neutral because money is not something that can make a decision on its own it's basically the people who have it that are good or evil so we shouldn't be saying that we're gonna blame money money is evil it has caused so much pain when in reality it's the people who have the money that are evil hmm? have you ever thought about it that way i honestly hadn't thought about it that way until this point and i'm glad she pointed it out because it wasn't so clear to me and the mantra for this chapter is that I love money because it is the root of so much awesome. So we're going to replace with that money is evil to money is the root of so much awesome. So no more money is the root of all evil, but money is the root of so much awesome. Because anyway, now first, number one is write down five positive words to describe money. Um, I would say helpful, um, good. Uh, oh wait, I can think of all so many words. Oh my, this is bad. Maybe it's good. Um, beneficial. Um, how many words are those? Three. I need two more. Hmm, beneficial. I would say resourceful. Resourceful and i want to say something that's associated with happiness so i'm just going to say happiness because money can cause you happiness in the long run so i don't know how else i can phrase that number two practice saying thank you every time you receive money think to yourself see money loves me if see money loves me it's just it just can stay away i feel like if i'm more grateful for money i won't be wasting it as much and then the other one is i'm grateful to money because it doesn't have control over me that's my reason for being grateful for money so that if you haven't read the book please do read it i shall link it in this video below so you guys can check it out for yourselves and see you on chapter 4 review okay guys so all right so now i'm going to review chapter 4 and then the phrase is like there's a, something written here when we are so convinced by and attached to what our brains are telling us we lose out on receiving this much deeper knowledge okay so basically what this means is if we are so confined by our, by our thoughts and what we feel or think is right we lose out on learning and the potential of learning new things and there's one that says a wise man once said nothing 
one of the statements here says one of the best ways to find out how you truly feel about money is to write a letter to it as if it were a person and I have that highlighted because of something I potentially want to do um, as I was reading this I was feeling a bit emotional not because because the relationship I have with money I personally feel it's like a painful one I I don't resent money but I don't love it but anyway it's very complicated it's very complicated for me so I need to find out what my relationship is with money and probably write a letter maybe I shall share it and then there's this another says, dear money I feel confident and secure when you're here and I like to spend you when you're around I feel generous to others but sometimes you leave without saying goodbye you're like a lover who comes and goes on a whim and yet I always want you back it makes me feel resentful and frustrated I get so scared when you go because I'm afraid maybe you'll never come back it makes me feel bad about myself why can't I just why can't you just enjoy being together I feel that way about money too, but I feel like most of us do feel that way about money. We might not say it, but we feel it, so yeah. Now the question is, write down five most common limiting words or phrases you and the people you hang around with, talk with, hang out with most used to talk about money. Okay, so one of them is evil. Um, the second one, it is... hard to get the third one is it is meaningless but I can expound on that meaningless in the sense that you need it to survive but it doesn't add anything to your life and then the fourth one is that it only comes to certain people and some people just don't get the opportunity to have money no matter how hard they work and then the fifth one is money is okay money causes problems so um either with your family with your friends whenever money is involved between friendship there's trouble but i am going to come up with a reason why money why i will want to make money that will cause me to work hard to make money and i have several in my head i just have to pick one that i really really you like and then the next one is to write a letter to money notice the key most emotional limiting beliefs that come up for you and do the rewrite drill for them too I'm gonna do that for sure I don't know when but I'm gonna do that and there you go and so I'm grateful for money because it gives me opportunity to learn and experience different things so there we have it and I shall be back when I'm done with chapter 5 which will be in a day or so maybe less who knows